Welcome back to Cyhawk game day. Well, it's looking like it's going to be a cool and maybe even rainy day here in Iowa City, especially once we get into the game. Uh, Local 5's meteorologist Taylor Canoes has your kickoff forecast. Well, like it or not, the weather likely will play a factor in today's Cyhawk game. Temperatures at the tailgate look just fine, but we'll see the clouds move in and then eventually showers moving in by this afternoon. I think right around four o'clock is when showers should begin in Iowa City, and it may not let up for the rest of the day and a rainy night ahead as well. And that's all thanks to uh, cold front moving through, and that's going to usher in some cooler temperatures as well. Again, the forecast at the tailgate, not too bad. Temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s all the way up to kickoff. It may be dry initially at kickoff time at 3 o'clock with the temperature around 71, but those will be falling to the 60s. The wind could be a factor as well today out of the north around 10 to 15 miles per hour. All right, thank you, Taylor. Well, the Cyclones are looking to get their first win over the Hawkeyes since 2014, while I was looking to keep that win streak alive. But let's take a trip in the time machine and relive some of the top moments from this rivalry over the past decade. In 2012, the Cyclones grinded out a 9-6 win over the Hawkeyes thanks to a game-sealing interception by Waukee native Jake Knott. Iowa would win the next matchup in 2013 by a score of 27-21. The 2014 edition came down to a dramatic finish as Cole Netton hit the game-winning field goal to give Iowa State the 20-17 win. The next two matchups were a bit more lopsided in favor of the Hawkeyes topping Iowa State 31-17 in 2015 and 42-3 in 2016. That wasn't the case the following year, though, as both teams battled it out in a 44-41 overtime thriller that saw the Hawkeyes lead victorious once again. 2018 was a much lower scoring affair, but the Hawkeyes still came out on top 13-3. On a wet and rainy evening in 2019, Iowa State let a late comeback slip away as the Hawkeyes made it five straight wins in the series by a final score of 18 to 17. That's three. That's three the two teams didn't meet in 2020 due to COVID, but in their most recent matchup in 2021, the Iowa defense was dominant, forcing four turnovers, helping the team to a 27 to 17 victory and their sixth straight win in the Cyhawk series. All right, it's time to take another quick break, but when we come back, Jeff Woody will have our first whiteboard breakdown of the season, so stay with us. Watch the UNI Panthers on CW Iowa 23. Diapers and politicians must be changed often, and for the same reason. 82% of voters support term limits for members of Congress, but Cindy Axney won't sign the term limits pledge. Term limits action is responsible for the content of this advertising. This is the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder and Rogue. With a range of drive modes and intelligent off-road technology, you can take a Sunday stroll in the least basic of places. The 2022 Nissan family of SUVs. Anything but basic. Now get the 2022 Nissan Rogue with best-in-class fuel economy among gas engines. We just want to get away. I have this friend and I want to take him somewhere, maybe to see a band, a ball game, just a fun weekend. You know, I don't say this to everyone, but you should play Hit It Big from the Iowa Lottery. Right now, you can enter to win a weekend getaway to Austin with spending cash, a private flight, and two tickets to see the Iowa State-Texas football game. I think my friend would really like that. To fly with Cy, play Hit It Big today. Woohoo! Cindy Axney refuses to listen to the will of the people. Axney refuses to sign the U.S. Term Limits Pledge, and that just, well, stinks. Don't send another arrogant career politician to Congress. Term Limits Action is responsible for the content of this advertising.
Welcome back to Cyhawk game day last week in Hunter Deckers connected with Xavier Hutchinson for three touchdowns in their win against Southeast Missouri State. So now I'll send it over to Jeff Woody to break down one of those touchdowns in his whiteboard breakdown. Thanks, Raina. Welcome back to the whiteboard. Now, this is the very first whiteboard of the 2022 season going into the Cyhawk football game. Now, we could break down Iowa's offense versus Iowa State's defense, but I don't think anybody wants to see that. So we're going to talk about Iowa State's offense versus what they will be facing against Iowa. Now, in order to do that, we have to look at what happened against SEMO. Now, very different scheme. SEMO and Iowa run almost opposite defensive formations, and now Iowa would have had all the film on Iowa State. But this very first drive that we're looking at, there are certain plays that can translate. Now, if you're Southeast Missouri, you have looked at just the last three years of film because this is the very first drive again. You don't know what this team is going to be preparing for, so you're probably thinking Brees Hall, three tight ends, big physical running game. So fourth and three, you're thinking tight formations. Everybody's got to be aggressive and physical. So we're going to put everybody inside of seven yards towards the line of scrimmage. So if you're Iowa State, you look at what they are doing now and your pre-snap read tells you a few things. The first thing is you have a middle open look. So what middle open means is that the safeties are going to split and they're going to do something probably like a cover two. You're not going to get someone in the middle. You're not going to have cover three or anything like that. So it's going to be probably cover two. These linebackers, they're kind of stacked over Iowa State having one tight end and one running back. So you've got a stacked linebackers over a stacked offensive formation. So I know that there's probably going to be something like a cover two or something like cover zero. Fourth and three, big moment in the game. So what I don't know is what everybody else is doing. So what Tom Manning does is he sets Jalen Nolan in motion because what he wants to see is what is Simo going to be doing to respond to this. That little zipper motion, he's going to end up back over here pretty much where he started. All they're doing is they're going to try and see if anybody follows when he goes to do that motion, which they do. So what does that tell you? Man to man. So now we've at least narrowed it down to a middle closed man to man defense. OK, now we've got to go a little bit further. I'm going to move Xavier, uh, Jalen Noel, excuse me, to this side. We're going to move him back to the other side, and that's about where we're going to get the snap. So what do we got to figure out now from this point? Pre-snap read. I've got two linebackers that are stacked over, again, tight end and running back. So there's six guys on the defense, and there are going to be seven guys over here. So tight end leaves. And OK, I'm 100 Deckers. I see that these two linebackers are adding themselves to the rush. So let's do a little bit of math, because football's not all that easy. So we're going to go one defensive lineman, two, three, four defensive linemen, then two linebackers. That's six. You have 11 players in the defense that you can use, which means you have five guys that are not rushing the quarterback. Now flip the other side. You've got five offensive linemen and a quarterback. Everybody else is an eligible receiver. So you've got five pass coverage defenders on five eligible receivers. That leaves how many left over? Zero. So what this tells you, this is cover zero. That means man to man across the board. So Hunter Deckers right now knows exactly where he's going with the football, which is I'm going to go to my best matchup. But in order for that to happen, there has to be a block picked up by Jirel Brock. So we're going to get a blitzing linebacker and we're going to get a stoned offensive block out of Jirel Brock. Now we look at Xavier Hutchinson, no one within five yards of him. My best receiver on off coverage in cover zero. Boom, I'm going to deliver the ball right to him. But one of the things that's more impressive about this offense than we've seen in a long time is on rhythm, accurate throws. If this ball is a little bit behind Xavier Hutchinson, he might have to lean back, might get tackled. If it's a little bit farther in front of him, it's incomplete. He's not able to get it. But this ball is right on the money. Now, why is that important? The window for scoring a touchdown against anybody is very small. If he had to break stride, even for one step, one of these two guys is going to make the play. But you know what doesn't happen? anything. Number eight, Xavier Hutchinson, big play touchdown for the Iowa State Cyclones in order to get themselves set up for the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, some good stuff there from Jeff Woody as always, but there's still plenty more to come here on Cyhawk game day. When we come back from break, we're going to get into some of those key matchups that could be difference makers in this game. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 48 months, plus save up to $1,100.
Attention, were you exposed to the toxic water at Camp Lejeune? Congress has just passed the Camp Lejeune Justice Act, which makes billions of dollars available to victims of the toxic water supply. If you or your family were exposed, you may be entitled to a share of that money. If you lived or worked at Camp Lejeune, even if you're not military, and have suffered any of these serious health problems, call 1-800-834-8200. That's 1-800-834-8200. Running a business takes passion, persistence, and a perpetual focus on performance. From your friends at Local 5 comes a new level of certainty in advertising, a measurement solution that shows the results you're getting from every marketing dollar you spend, attribution data you can trust, measurement experts you can rely on, results you can see for yourself. Get the word out and new customers in. Be in good company with Local 5. All right, welcome back to Cyhawk Game Day. Now, last weekend, Iowa escaped with the win. Uh, mind you, that was um, against an FCS, FCS team. I can never say that, albeit a very good one in South Dakota State. But they will have a much tougher opponent uh, today in Iowa State. Um, and I spoke to Trent Condon with the Locked on Hawkeyes podcast about what Iowa needs to do to come out with a win today. You got two sides that feel a little bit nervous. And that's something that I think is different in this game here in 2022 compared to past seasons where it felt like one side had an advantage or one side fan base really feel confident going into it. I felt nervousness all week for both the Hawkeye and the Cyclone perspective. The fans that I've talked to on both sides, it's Iowa State. Oh, here we go again. Iowa didn't play well, and they'll play well against us. On the other side, as bad as Iowa looked, obviously, offensively Saturday, how are we going to score points? If we got to score 10, 14, 21, whatever it is, how is this offense going to be able to do it? But this has not been a one-game thing. This has been over the last eight games where Spencer Petras has really struggled. Only once during that time has Spencer Petras led two touchdown drives over the last nine games. In the three games that Alex Padilla did, played in, he did it twice. I, I think there it's not only that there's a guy struggling, but there is a backup that has at least been competent and he's not getting an opportunity, and it just it leads down the path. Kirk in the post-game press conference, he mentioned two different times practice. We heard Brian yesterday talking about practice. The problem, at least as I see it, is Spencer Peters, I'm sure he looks great in practice with a red jersey on and nobody that can hit him, but in games over the last nine games, he just hasn't been good enough. I've been ready for Padilla. I just don't know if the coaching staff still is ready to go there yet. You know, that's going to be, I think, one of the biggest keys of this game is what Hunter Deckers looks like against this Iowa defense. They're elite, and they're elite at three different levels. The defensive line is as deep as it's ever been at the University of Iowa. Literally nine or ten guys that can play big-time snaps for them up front. We know about the linebacking crew, even minus Jacobs this week, how good they have been. And then that secondary and the depth that they've shown. And Quinn Schulte, in his first career start, how well he played. The quarterback position, they're deep, they're strong. And Deckers, Iowa in the past, they've made it difficult on young quarterbacks. First start on the road for him, it's going to be a different environment. Yeah, he came in against Oklahoma. He came in against Iowa a year ago. This is completely different. He looks ready to go against Southeast Missouri State. This is going to be a completely different animal. If Iowa can turn it over a couple of times, that's been the key lately, is the turnovers in this game. If they can do that against Deckers, it could be another game where the Hawkeye defense proves to be the difference, and they get the win that way. I might be just a beatdown Hawkeye fan, but ultimately I think Iowa State is going to get it done. The law of averages, I think, points that direction. The six consecutive wins, how many times during these six victories obviously could have gone to Iowa State's way. I think a bounce here, a bounce there. And again, the questions at quarterback going to prove to be the difference. Low scoring, but I got the Cyclones winning at 17-13. Well, like Trent said, Iowa State cruised to victory over Southeast Missouri State last weekend, but today they will be facing their first real test against a struggling, but yet a still very tough Iowa team. And I'm going to send it over now to Jeff Woody to tell us about some of the key matchups in this game. Thanks, Raina. Now, 
If you're Iowa State and you're looking at this matchup with Iowa, there are a few things that stick out. I mean, obviously the easy one is Hunter Deckers because against this defense, if you can throw the ball, you can win. If you can't throw the ball, you absolutely get throttled. There is no in between. So Hunter Deckers is kind of the go to. All right, if he plays well, Iowa State's going to play well. But there are a couple other matchups that are actually really, really important, very specifically against Iowa. Now, Iowa's replacement for Tyler Linderbaum is a little bit shaky in his opener. Now, a lot of what Spencer Petras struggled with was Spencer Petras' fault. His mechanics were a little bit off. He was lacking a little bit of confidence. But it also doesn't help to add confidence when you're getting hit in the teeth right up the middle. So Iowa State's Isaiah Lee, their primary nose guard, is going up against an inexperienced center, and they have the capacity to continue to rattle Spencer Petras. So Isaiah Lee in the middle against the interior offensive lineman of center guard center when they're actually trying to get the running game going or pass, that's a really important matchup. Now the other one, and you cannot talk about Iowa without talking about the best player on the field, punter Torrey Taylor. Now, if you watch the South Dakota State game, a lot of the punts that Torrey Taylor hit, hit the ground first. Well, if you're Jalen Knoll, the punt returner, you can't let that happen. No matter where he puts the ball, if it is reasonable for you to make a catch, you've got to catch that ball because if it lands in the 13, it's not going to roll in the end zone. He's good enough at controlling the spin, controlling the bounce. It's going to get a picked up at the two. So you've got to make every attempt to catch that ball because I was likely going to punt a lot. Their offense, even when they're clicking, is meant to get down the field and punt the ball to pin you deep and let that defense go to work. So Jalen Knoll versus Torrey Taylor is another really key matchup. So there's a couple different kind of fun, unsexy matchups that you can look at which can help decide this game. So obviously, again, Hunter Deckers is the first one, but interior defensive line for Iowa State and then the punt returner for Iowa State are going to be big matchups in this game. Get on the news. I'm already on the news. All right, it's time for another quick break, but when we come back, we will get into the keys to the game for both teams, and we're going to give some score predictions. So keep it right here on Cyhawk Game Day. Iowa homeowners, if you want to add value, security, and curb appeal to your home, call Clear Choice of Des Moines, your trusted local home remodeling experts. We create happy customers. From installing high-performance triple pane windows to our solid core insulated vinyl siding, beautiful entry doors, patio doors, and rain gutters. Visit replacement-windows-desmoines.com or call 800-833-9260. When it comes to high school football in Central Iowa, no one beats Local 5's Friday Night Blitz. Join us under the lights where we feature more schools, exclusive stories, the Blitz Player of the Week, and you won't want to miss the countdown of the night's top plays. Plus, join in on social media using the hashtag Local5Blitz for a chance to be a part of the conversation. Watch Local 5 Friday Night Blitz, Fridays at 1035. Friday Night Blitz is sponsored by Fairway. The homes that stand the test of time have something essential in common. Durable, energy efficient, and weather resistant. Windows, roofing, siding, gutters, and gutter guards from Hanson's, the home improvement experts. Because everything we replace is guaranteed for life. With over 30 years experience and thousands of five-star reviews, you can take pride in your home for you and your family. For now and always. Get up to 60% off installation. Offer ends soon. Call 1-800-HANSON'S. Get it done. Welcome back, everybody. Out here at the Iowa State Fair, it feels like a tropical vacation because the weather is just perfect. Hi, Pearl. This is Grand Champion Pearl. Perhaps even better, we're getting to meet all of you. Thousands of people are stopping by the Local 5 booth and Weather Lab, and I mean it when I say we're happy to see you out here. We're wrapping up an immensely successful fair, and we thank you for being here again. All right, we are wrapping things up here on Cyhawk game day. So before we get out of here, uh, let's go into some of those keys to the game, starting with Iowa State. Now, this first and foremost is going to be take care of the ball. Turnovers have killed Iowa State in their matchups with Iowa, and this Hawkeye defense is very good. So you can't give them anything to capitalize on because as we saw last week, they will do just that if you let them. Now, secondly, you got to play discipline, limit the penalties, and don't beat yourself. This is a rivalry game, so emotions 
may be running high. So Iowa State really needs to maintain focus um, from start to finish there. Lastly, uh, you got to force the Iowa offense into mistakes. Spencer Petras coming off a rocky performance. So if you can get to him early and often, not allowing him to get in a rhythm, that will likely be key in this one. Now for Iowa, uh, the big one here is score points. It may seem obvious, but the offense, you know, not putting up a lot of points uh, last week and their defense outscored them and that cannot happen today. Spencer Petras in this offense really needs to find a way uh, to put points on the board, preferably at least one touchdown. Uh, and secondly, the defense doesn't need much help, but they can use the crowd noise to their advantage. This will be Hunter Decker's first real road test in a hostile environment as a starter. So he may have a tough time trying to work through this type of environment. So you got to use that to make him as uncomfortable as possible. And finally, Tory Taylor is elite. So even if the offense isn't clicking, you can always count on him to uh, come out and pin the offense deep and give your defense something to work with. Now let's get into some of those score predictions uh, and or actually before we do that, we're going to look at the tail of the tape, put up some stats here. Um, Iowa State obviously has the upper hand uh, just based on the stats. If you look at it, almost 300 yards passing uh, 178 yards on the ground compared to Iowa's 109 yards passing and only 57 rushing yards. So the Hawkeyes um, not they have not scored a touchdown yet this season, but uh, they have had a couple of safeties. So um, if you just look at the numbers, Iowa State has the edge there. So let's Let's go ahead and round things out with some score predictions. I know I have, uh, or excuse me, Trent, you heard him earlier, said he has the Cyclones winning this one 17 to 13. Jeff Woody has almost an identical score, 17 14. I'm going to be a little bit more generous uh, with the points here, 24 14 uh, is my final score prediction and of course we will have all of the highlights post game coverage for you um, on local five later tonight at six o'clock and 10 o'clock. You're not going to want to miss that. So make sure to tune in to catch all the highlights from today's game. I know I'm excited. This is my first go round with the Cyhawk game being a newcomer to the state. Uh, people are pretty excited. They're pretty lit as the kids stay out here already and it's not even noon. So looking forward to having a good game, good atmosphere and We'll see who comes out on top, but that'll do it for us here on Cyhawk Game Day. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you right back here next Saturday.